One of the puzzles of planet Earth is the composition of the crust of the Earth. There are, in fact, two kinds of crust. There's oceanic crust, which is underlying the oceans of the uh, world, and there is uh, continental crust. These kinds of rock, both are igneous in origin, that is, fire-formed rocks, and yet they differ in their composition, the kinds of minerals they're made of, and they differ in their density. And the puzzle is, why would we have rock uh, sitting side by side, oceanic crust and continental crust, that are quite different in that way? They also differ in age. The, uh, the basic underlying rock of the continents is much older than the rock of the oceanic crust, and yet they sit there side by side on the surface of the Earth. That's the puzzle. When we try to characterize the rocks of the continental crust, we describe them as being granitic in composition. Granite, this kind of rock here, is a granitic composition rock. On the other hand, the rocks of the oceanic crust are described as basalt. And this is an example of basalt, lava rock, uh, lava as uh, most of us would probably recognize and describe it. These rocks uh, are quite different in appearance. This characteristic of continental crust, this of oceanic crust. If you look at the granite, you'll see that it is very grainy. You can see black specks in it, biotite and quartz, the white, but you see large grains in the rock. This one, the grains are somewhat larger than in this one, but the grains are there in both cases. However, when you look at the basalt, characteristic of the oceanic crust, and ignoring the little holes that come about because of gas bubbles that, are, that boil out of the rock when it hardens, you'll see that the rock itself is smooth and doesn't have the grains that the granite ha has. When we try to imagine the origins of these rocks and try to account for their differences in appearances, or in appearance, um, we get some clues to their origins from the size of the crystals that form the specks here in the granite. When you try to grow a crystal, you have to grow it very, very slowly in order to form this, this lump, this, this structured crystal. So when we see large crystals in a rock, that tells us that the rock likely cooled very slowly. On the other hand, when we see rock lacking these large crystals, then it suggests to us that that particular kind of rock must have cooled quite quickly. So when we try to account for the existence of the granite versus the uh, basalt, we think of the granite as a rock that is formed in what we call intrusive events. That is, this molten rock with a consistency something like oatmeal is kind of pushed up from down underneath towards the surface, but being like oatmeal is not free to, to run to the surface and consequently is trapped there to cool slowly and to form large crystals in this granite uh, substance. On the other hand, when we imagine the origins of the basalt, we think of a rock that was probably quite runny in consistency when it was melted and molten, and able then to come up through the fissures in the rock to the surface, and then to spread out on the surface and cool quickly. And cooling quickly then uh, forms a very smooth rock, quite different from the granite. <coughs>